guys, it's Pars Plus Judgment. I also go by Will, and I am here again with my large number of sketchbook backlog to go through. And today I'm going to be doing the first two sketchbooks in my 2011 pile. Uh, I'm not sure. For those who are just joining us today, I'm not doing the entire 2015 sketchbook pile. I believe I said 2011, I'm sorry. 2015. Um, because my entire 2015 sketch pile would be this big. This is a lot of sketchbooks, and I'm not going to be able to fit all of them in one video unless it's like five hours long. So, as it stands, I'm going to go through the first two because these are both 100 page sketchbooks, and we will go through the others in a later video. Um, so, these were, as I said, from 2015, and 2015 was really the year that I really started getting into art and understanding that it was what I wanted to do with my characters and something that I wanted to do with, uh, well, what I like to create. It was really a stepping stone, and part of it was because around that time I found characters that I created that I loved, and I interacted with a lot of other artists who were my friends. It wasn't just... A small group of people interacting and sort of exchanging drawings back and forth. I had a larger group of artist friends and I could interact with them more and that really kicked up my inspiration and I drew a lot more. So this one is from early January. This one is again a Strathmore 100 page recycled sketchbook, recycled paper sketchbook. Um, just a lot of random stickers on here, Owls, Hello Kitty, Frozen, Spider-Man. This one's glow in the dark, I think. Um, but this is around the time that I got my Copic markers, as I stated earlier. And so I started adding a lot more color to these sketchbooks. This was also uh, where I went abroad for about five months to do classes in the UK. And I was in Bath. And I couldn't bring all of my stuff with me, so I just brought uh, the essentials, basically. And, yeah. I also had been in a lot of groups at the time, so I was in uh, Theros, which was a Ruby OC group. I was in the Hunger Games OCT, which I did a lot of experimental stuff for that, just to figure out my drawing style and to learn a lot of stuff. So a lot of these OCs either aren't mine, or belong to someone else, or were from the groups that I was in. Just because I drew a lot for those groups. I also was doing a lot of stuff um, with uh, traditional line art and digital coloring. I still really like doing traditional line art and digital coloring, but it's not nearly as frequent as I used to. Because I just at the time was not really used to digital line art. And it took a while for me to actually get used to it. These were from some style studies, I believe. Where I was trying to imitate other people's styles. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things where I learned a lot and I progressed a lot in a short amount of time just because I was drawing so much. And this is when I really learned that if you draw every day, even if it's just like a little scribble, this was concept art for the Hunger Games OCT for an, uh, a chariot outfit. We, it, you really improve exponentially, and this was the year I started drawing every single day. But yeah, um, there's a lot of uh, line work in here just because I worked with fine liners a lot. Uh, this is my friend's character Mirror from D&D. This is also when I first really got into tabletop as well. I had been doing D&D for a while, but I then found a group that was actually playing more often than once every three months. So there was that. And then I wanted to try out all the different colors in my new Copic set. So I used a lot more colors and tried to be more experimental. And it wasn't really the best in terms of color theory, but I got to learn more with the medium I had and learn more about what kind of colors I had and what sort of thing I was doing in terms of 
learning how to use Copics. So it was just a really experimental time for me and I think it was really, really good. Uh, I did a, a color of the day thing where I drew my character Emery with a specific marker that I randomly chose from my Copic collection because I actually got a large number of Copics on a discount. So that's how I got most of my collection. I bought them in bulk and it was maybe two or three dollars a marker, which is really, really cheap for Copic markers. And Emery was a character who, they are really easy to draw because they have a really simple face structure and body structure. So it, they were really good to help learn how to stylize and how to learn to use more colors. Oh, this was our haircut reference that I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I just played around with outfits, played around with shapes and styles, and it was really fun to do that. And it's how I got to the point I am today with my current style. This is one that actually I remember this one. This was one of the first pencil drawings I did in a while that I really, really enjoyed. Because I hadn't been doing many of these as much since I got my Copics. So I tried to do another one of them. This is also, if you notice, when I actually started hand dating things. Um, because I wanted to know when I did them. And... Yeah, it was, this is good for me because now I know when these sketchbooks were, it wasn't just random drawings places. But, yeah, I was in a lot of OCTs then, this is from the Sailor Moon OCT I mentioned in the last sketchbook video, because I'm assuming that they are going up in order. Uh, I'm actually pre-recording a lot of these before I go away from home for a month, so a lot of this is actually going to be pre-recorded and therefore if you have had any questions that I haven't responded to or I'm not responding to about these videos the reason is probably because these were pre-recorded and I will probably have to answer them in the comments um because I'm not bringing my tripod with me to um to where I'm going so Oh, this was when I was trying to learn how to blend two different colors because the character had like pink and purple hair and I wasn't really getting it correctly and I I wasn't really used to coloring people in grayscale who weren't white and it, it I struggled. I struggled with that. Uh, more thumbnails. More thumbnails. Uh, Veil again because his brother is an idiot. Uh, and then again, I, I keep for a while I keep going back to these leads and I do enjoy them but I didn't really use them as often as I would have liked because I still had the 6H that I liked a lot better and the color leads I was using didn't really erase super well and I didn't particularly like having to use them for sketches that I was going to erase later so I did end up coming back to them eventually but it wasn't really something that I did at the time uh, you might notice that in some of my more recent sketchbooks, I color in colored lead all the time, and I really enjoy doing that, but it's just a thing that I didn't do at the time because it wasn't something I was super comfortable with yet. Uh, you can also see occasionally there's uh, pictures of, oh, that's Professor Sycamore, I think. Uh, there was a joke that my character and his twin brother, if you combine them together, their fusion would be like Professor Sycamore, so there was a running gag for that. Uh, there's a lot of, like, in attempted environmental studies, because I tried to do more studies of things when I was abroad in the UK, because there was churches around and really beautiful architecture. But the bottom line is, I'm just not- I was not very good at that at the time, uh, because I was never taught really how to do studies like that, so I didn't really know. But I did try, and I think that's important. Um, yeah, this is another one that I used the colored lead with. This is uh, my sister's OC. At the time, it was her design for Matt, uh, one of her characters, but then she switched the, this design for his twin brother, Michelle. So, Lynn doesn't get along with either of them either, anyway, so it doesn't really matter in the long run. But yeah, it was just a time that I was just trying a lot of different things, and yeah, I enjoyed experimenting. I remember this was a really prosperous time for me, and I just felt really happy that I could figure things out. I remember doing all these drawings in a church while I was trying to figure things out, and then this was more Hunger Games stuff. 
I drew a lot for that particular character in that year. And this is upside down because the character was supposed to be hanging upside down. But at the time, I couldn't figure out how to do things upside down, so I just drew them right side up and then switched it around. But yeah, it was a time that I had a lot more artist friends and I felt a lot more inspired and I learned a lot. And I was willing to try a bunch of different new things just because I saw them. I remember, I remember also being really proud of this picture because this was one of the first pictures that I drew that when I drew it, it came out looking like it looked in my head. Um, I did a lot of attempted attempts at comics around this time as well. Uh, and some trying to consistently character design. It kind of worked, kind of didn't. Sailor Moon transformation for uh, the Sailor Moon OCT. I think I did this backwards for some reason. I don't know why. I still didn't draw on both sides of the page at the time because I just, I liked drawing on one side of the page and I didn't want to worry about it, like, bleeding over to the other side just because I used graphite still so much. Oh, this was uh, Chinese New Year and my character is like a goat, kind of, and so he celebrated that. Um, another mini comic, just to like, get back into doing comics for myself as opposed to doing comics for OCTs. Uh, I believe this one was a bunch of pen tests because I had a pen that I wanted to try out. Uh, yeah, it was just like a time when I was experimenting mostly. And I think I've said that multiple times now. I apologize. I don't have as much to say because I don't want to explain every single thing in this sketchbook because that would take forever. Uh, and I'm already at 10 minutes. And I still have another sketchbook to go through. So I don't want to make it too long. Uh, but yeah. And that's Marcus, my uh, sister's OC. Uh, this one... I had bought because I was in the UK at the time and I had finished this one faster than I expected to. So I bought this one when I was in the UK. This is a Canson Universal Sketch Pad. Uh, and these are stickers that I got either, I was in Berlin for these ones and then I was at o University College in Oxford. So I, at this point, liked getting stickers to uh, figure out where I was, uh, figure out where I've been as well as sketchbooks. So I tried to collect stuff like that. Uh, and this is February to April, so I did this a little bit slower than the last one, which was mostly January. Um, this is a lot smoother paper than my normal sketchbooks, though. So I remember that. This was actually one of my professors. She looked super, super young. Um, a bunch of headshots. Yeah, I was doing a lot of mixed media stuff at the time because I didn't necessarily work only with Copics at the time. Even though I was trying to learn them, but I also had a bunch of different, like, mediums with me that I want to try out. So I mixed and matched them a lot. There's a lot of stuff with spots of color because I didn't want to color the entire thing. I just want to use, like, minor colors or those were the only colors I had at the time. Um, outline of my friend's character, Ashley. I started to understand chibis a little bit more. I still don't really draw them very often, but I understand them a little bit more these days. This is me trying to figure out how chibi proportions worked. Uh, going back to an old design for Ame, I still didn't understand hips. What the heck is this? Like, wh what is that? I really worked on my line art as well at the time. I enjoyed outlining things a lot, and I liked trying to figure out weighted line art. And I did most of that by hand. And I didn't use brush pens at the time because I wasn't really super fond of them. More chibis. More chibis from Hunger Games. Uh, Pharos. But yeah, I wasn't really super fond of brush pens. I'm still not the best with them. And I'm not, like, amazed with them. They're not my primary line art tool. I prefer fine liners. But it was... Something I really enjoyed doing because I liked the weighted look of, um, of weighted lines with fine liner and doing it by hand. 
There's also a lot of sketches in here that are done with pencil and then colored on top of because I was trying to see how well those would work and also because I want to do something quick as opposed to do something that looked finished. And sometimes I didn't really want to line art something entirely. Or I screwed up on the line art and I want to cover it up with something. This is more Veil. Um, I remember doing, this was from a gamer um, AU where Veil was a video gamer instead of a politician because he didn't care what kind of popularity he would have gotten. This sort of AU actually helped define one of the lighter characters I had named Levi, who is basically Vale's son, and I basically transposed the video game stuff to um, to his son instead. It, but look at this attempt at drawing shirtless people. I've gotten much better at drawing shirtless people. Um, generally, I've gotten a more solidified style, but most of my stuff back then was kind of just boxes and tubes. I don't remember what this math was for. I think this was trying to figure out stats for tabletop. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That um that was I think vent art. Not that not that I personally do that cuz I I don't, but my characters do sometimes that that's not d don't don't hurt yourself i'll probably discuss that in another video but that don't i i'm not good at tackling things off the cuff um this was when i was trying to do um more white and black noir type stuff because i just got my hands on a decent white gel pen again so i was trying to use that more often more studies of Vale and some King stuff. Tivo. Uh, more pencil studies. This one, I remember doing this one because I didn't have any thick pens at the time. So I was just using my, uh, my normal ballpoint pens. They were, they were ink based, like liquid ink, not just a regular ballpoint pen, but it was hard to draw with them, but I tried my best at the time. I I didn't rem I never remember this paper being this smooth. Oh, this was another stylized thing that I was testing out. I, I played with shapes a lot this year. Uh, another colored sketch. Yeah, this is a really smooth paper. I don't remember using paper this smooth. And most of the paper I use these days has some sort of texture on it, uh, like... A physical texture, not just uh, appearance-wise. Uh, pen challenge. Uh, that was a thing from another, um, like, horror-themed thing that I was doing. Uh, fan art for Jasper. Bef uh, not, not actual Jasper, but this is brecated Jasper before Jasper was introduced from, uh, for a Gemsona. Uh, well, two gem OCs that I, that I've used. Uh, shoulder and I think inner bicep were the two gem locations and they fused to create Brickhated Jasper. One was Obsidian, the other one was some red gem. I think it might have been Carnelian. I don't remember off the top of my head. Veil vale again. Veil vale sleeps like a cat, except when he's in a bed. This was how I would sleep when I need to finish papers, like, at 1 in the morning. I would take naps like this, and because it was such an uncomfortable pose, I would wake up in, like, 45 minutes and then just keep working on my paper. Another gem fusion of Vale and his brother. Uh, gem Sona for quartz. Gem would be in the back, in between the shoulder blades. More sketches. This is uh, another attempt at noir shading and trying to do like solid black heavy shading with white lines. This is when I first uh, created Leia because Leia was originally just a gender bent version of Veil vale that I used for a one shot tabletop campaign. I have to cover up boobs here, so I apologize. And I really liked the um, dynamic that she brought to the table on her own. So I decided that Vale was going to have a twin sister, and it kind of went from there. 
and she's just grown into her own character since then. So it's now 2017, so she's only like two years old. But as a character, I work with her a lot because she's one of my favorites. But yeah, she used to just be a gender bent version of her brother, and I thought that she was better than that. And this was a lot of me trying out different things with her as a character when she was just still the identical twin. And this is when I actually really started giving her green hair. It was originally just supposed to be a wig that she uses as a disguise so people wouldn't realize that she was just her brother's twin sister. Um, because they, they were identical. And yes, I'm aware that identical twins don't work that way. They're, I, I do mean they are identical. Um, but after that I really enjoyed how the green hair looked and I just decided to make that her normal hair. Because they're fairies, so they're shapeshifters anyway. Um, yeah, this is uh, basically filled with Emery and the Canes a lot. Because those were my VOCs I was obsessing over at the time. And yeah. Oh, this is an attempt to do some white pen work over colored stuff. So I laid down the color and then I sketched directly in pen. Uh and used white ink for the highlights. I'm actually really happy with how these turned out. Uh, I want to do something again like that. Uh, this is also when I started finding like outfits that I thought were pretty online, so I would just stick my OCs in them. This was actually one of my favorite pictures for a while. Uh, some sort of shadow demon. I think I was drawing this for a friend. Uh, me trying to do cell shaded type gradient stuff because I wasn't really good at blending at the time. So I was trying to learn, but I didn't really know what I was doing for a while. Uh, but I also think that these are with Prisma colors and those don't blend as well as Copics do. So there's that. This was April drawing and I this is the first time I did April drawing. And these days, um... Or at least the past two years when I did April drawing, I didn't try and do April drawing following the prompts. I just tried to do it and finish it. My bad. My phone ran out of space in the middle of recording. And yeah, I it kind of stopped filming because there was no more space for it to film. Uh, but yeah, I was here. And what I was saying was, this is my sister's art. I went to go visit her. She lives in Germany, so I don't really get to see her all that often in person. And she drew my sketchbook. And I I really enjoy it when my friends draw my sketchbook because I like having a piece of their art with me when I carry things and stuff like that. And when, especially when I was traveling. Um, more style stuff that I didn't really stick with, but I attempted. Doodle. Me playing around with my gel pen a bit more and my dark colors. Uh, this was, I remember drawing this when I was slightly tipsy cause I was in the UK and I was legal to drink there. And this was for a God mode friend for the drunk stream. This is my attempt at an animal for my friend Critter. Attempt at drawing veil and a stylized stuff again, mouse. Uh, unsealy monster mouth. Uh, more stylish stuff. I tried to do uh, shapes for noses for a while. It didn't really stick, but it helped me figure out what I was doing with noses and sort of how noses are constructed. Uh, this is a picture by my friend Sasha, and he is also in Germany, and he has this really nice graphic style. I will link my sister and Sasha down in the description. Um, and this was a witch character that I was thinking of doing for Monster Hearts. Uh, that didn't go through for that time. I eventually used Levi later. And this is more God Mode stuff that, uh, I was doing mostly because I was around Sasha and Chen, uh, my sister. And, uh, they, I met them through God, well, I didn't meet Chen through God Mode, but I met Sasha through God Mode. So it was really nice to see them. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't really, um that far from the end but this and this sketchbook really started off uh it really made an impact on my year because i started these two sketchbooks and i finished 
both of them within like four months, two months, a uh, month and a half basically for the two of them. Uh, I think, well, this one ended in April, so four months, but it really helped define what I was doing with my free time, what I enjoy doing, and yeah, it basically kicked off what I really loved doing with my characters in my life. So these sketchbooks start me figuring out that I really, really want to do art for a career, even though I didn't get to that point for a while yet. But yeah, I don't really have much to say about that, but as usual, if you have any questions or any topics that you'd like me to talk about, you can feel free to leave them down in the comments or contact me on any of my social media. Anyone that I mentioned will be linked down in the description. And yeah, as always, thank you so much for your support. Bye!